Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. During this whole quarantine online education situation, you may have asked yourself, how the heck are some courses going to be taught online? For example, STEM courses that have labs or art courses that require canvases and a bunch of specific supplies. Courses that have a real world component, courses that are centered around a project in collaboration. How is that all gonna work? So I am an engineering major at Dartmouth, so I thought I would share the engineering STEM concern, how they're dealing with that. Ivy League education and I still can't make sentences. Right here I have my first engineering supplies lab toolkit sent to me um, for my systems class. Some classes even straight up sent every student their own 3D printer, which is like super cool. Wow, double view. Cords. <laughs> Whoa. A list of everything that's inside. Oh, I just dropped it. That's great for me. A sticker. That's cute. Play Doh. And that's it. So, this is everything that's in there. Oh, looks like we're gonna do some circuitry. I hate that. Wow. I mean, cool. Nice. I don't know when I'm gonna have to use these or what I will use them for. I have some ideas, but cool. So the purpose of this lab is to get comfortable with oscilloscope operation. We're beginning to transition from those mathematical representations to the actual physical operations. This is the packet with all the information with the how-to and the setup for the lab and it's like magic. First thing I need for this lab is a 47.5 ohm resistor. Pretty sure I have the correct one picked out from the colors, but I'm gonna use this digital multimeter just to check really quickly. So as you can see, I have it set to ohms, and so I'm going to touch both ends of the resistor. 47.5. And of course, for any lab, you need your trusty lab assistant. So nice of Dartmouth to mail me this pupper in the FedEx package. Sorry, I forgot to show that before. So cute, so nice, so helpful. Honestly, has been able to answer so many of my questions. So everything I've showed you up to this point has been for a class called Systems. It has a laboratory component. We saw me doing that with a bunch of mailed supplies. Dartmouth was super awesome for sending over those. I have lectures for that class in the morning at 8.50 a.m. Eastern, um, four days a week. One lab per week and one problem set per week. We also have quizzes on Fridays. It's very hard to focus on your quiz when you know that you have such a limited time period and have to convert it to a PDF and upload it all within a certain time frame. Not a perfect solution but everyone's trying and it's less pressure because it's pass fail so that's how I'm dealing with learning engineering concepts and doing practical labs but that's not all engineering is right engineering is also designing and being creative and building things with your hands and I'm taking another engineering class literally intro to engineering um, about that and the general structure of that class has always been find a problem find a need and create a solution and that is no different um, except that this term obviously the theme is COVID-19. So for that class I have a project we're spread out across six hours because of time zones. We're working on a physical product. We're still building prototypes. We have a $600 budget um, with which we can order supplies. We have about a dozen lab instructors, TAs, wonderful engineering helper people um, on campus that are willing to advise us on the directions we need to go. They're willing to mail us stuff from the 
the 3D printer. Brainstorming on whiteboards for my Zoom later. <laughs> Obviously it's different. We're still in the very beginning stages of prototyping. We don't know if, anyone, if everyone's going to be able to actually have a physical prototype or if we're gonna build parts separately or if just one or two people are gonna do it. We don't know that yet. But the whole point is I'm still getting hands-on engineering experience. And I so appreciate all of the work that these professors and TAs and lab assistants and everyone is putting in to replicate the engineering experience as closely as possible. That being said though, I don't think that this is maintainable, at least not for me. I am just now starting to take engineering courses and now that I'm actually taking courses for my major, how I learn them kind of matters a bit more. I'm taking two very foundational courses right now online for pass fail. It's not how it's supposed to be and honestly a lot of people dropped out of these courses at the beginning of the term because they wanted the opportunity to take them in person. However, we just found out that our summer term is online too and every day it's looking more and more likely that fall will be as well. So I'm glad that I took these courses this term. I am a lot more confident about um, declaring an engineering major and my abilities to succeed in the major. But realistically, I think that taking half of the courses for my engineering major online is, is just not a good idea. I'm confident the professors will continue to get better at the remote format, but as much as we try to replicate it, it will never be the same. Like, I'm getting to build things, yes, but I don't get to be in the machine shop. I'm not getting to work collaboratively with people in person. I'm limited to what they can send me and what I have in my own home. And while again, I appreciate all of the effort they're putting in, I don't think anyone can blame me for wanting to get hands-on experience in a hands-on major. Which is why I'm probably not gonna continue taking classes after this term until I can go back to campus. And the fact that after this term, I would get actual grades on my real transcript for learning online, which I think is kind of unfair, given the lack of resources we have at home and the uncertainty of the world right now. As sad as it is, there's a good chance I won't get to walk with my class at graduation. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to deal with all of this. It's kind of normal for engineers to be on campus for five years, and to be honest, there's no real actual reason that I need to graduate in 2022. There's not, it's just a number, it's arbitrary. Like, you cannot blame me for doing that. What are you guys doing? If you don't have school in the fall, are you gonna go back? Are you gonna take a gap year, a gap term? Like, how are you feeling? What are you thinking? Do you think that it's worth it for you? I don't know, at one point it was so clear, like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior graduate in 2022, and now I feel like there's a thousand different paths. I could go down. I haven't stepped foot in a classroom in 2020 and there's a really good chance I won't at all. This wasn't supposed to be a rant, I just wanted to show you guys how I was doing engineering online but now you have like my whole sap story. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, that's how I'm learning engineering online. Those are my thoughts going into learning engineering in the future. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know how your major is going. I'm so curious about how like art majors are dealing with this. Are they shipping you supplies? Like bio majors? Dartmouth is offering I think one, maybe two biology courses in the summer like you just can't learn the same way you know let me know in the comments like subscribe all that again my name is Hannah bye